few uh, few quick announcements before I get started. If you did get a card down here, please, if uh, you would return them after service, write their name down, uh, return them so we would have their information, uh, and just keep re- praying for our community. Um, we have another opportunity Wednesday night at 6.30. We will be feeding... Uh, having our Wednesday night meal, we will start that, and that will be at 6.30. Uh, the Alliance Center after school program will be eating with us. Uh, right now we have uh, a mother with seven kids going to join us. That is confirmed. So please uh, join uh, us on Wednesday night as we do the Wednesday night meal. Uh, just please continue to pray for the kids that are in our uh, school, our program, the after school has 15 children. Uh, the, the daycare, the preschool, it has uh, 20 to 40 kids in there right now. So continue to pray for the teachers. I hadn't had the opportunity to meet all of the new teachers. There are a lot of new teachers. But continue to pray for that. Uh, God has uh, brought these people here for a reason. They God has brought us here for a reason, and let his name be glorified and the gospel be preached in everything that we do. So, as we dive into the scripture today, John chapter 6, and we will begin reading at number chapter uh, verse number 1. So, if you have your Bibles, please stand in the honor of, in the reading, of the reading of God's word. John chapter 6, verse 1. It says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain so nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign of Jesus, did say, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come to take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and we thank you. And we thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing. Lord, I thank you for working a miracle in my life and working a miracle in those that are hearing my voice today. Lord, just please help us to hear your word and to do everything that you would have us to do. Lord, may your name be glorified. Lord, if there's anything that I say that is not of you, please let it be silent. Lord, may your name be glorified in everything that we do every day. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the scripture. Thank you for everything that you are doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 
So there are several different applications that we can draw from these scriptures, I believe. Well, first, last week, we talked about uh, faith, uh, a test of faith. Jesus was testing Philip. He was testing Andrew. He was ta- testing the disciples. The disciples had walked with him. They have talked with him. They have learned from him. And uh, all the things that Jesus had done, it started in Je- uh, John chapter 2 with the with the marriage feast, with changing the water into wine. It, it went from there to healing the sick and, and uh, doing many other things in the start. So this was uh, another miracle that was happening and doing. And it was a test of faith. Jesus was testing uh, Philip and Andrew and the other disciples, trying to see what was going on. It's a test of faith. It could also be tied to tithing. I believe that um, you can draw tithing into this on the on the tithe of uh, on the on the purpose of the little boy's meal. He had five barley loaves and two fishes. Now, it's not talking about tithing, but I think the implications and the applications are there. The things that you have, we ought to give to God. We ought to be a cheerful giver. We ought to give them uh, knowing that God can do more with the 10% than we can the 90. But do you understand, we give our 10%, yes. And then, oh, we have this 90 to do everything. Do you understand, God just does not want the 10%. He wants all of it. He wants you. He wants your heart. It tells us in the Scripture to uh, take up thy cross daily. And follow me. Take up that cross daily. Die to yourself. The cross is is uh, painted sometimes as this great uh, picture, as this dainty thing that we. And if you wear one around your neck, I, I, I'm not picking on you. Promise me this. But a lot of times we picture the cross as something dainty, uh, something beautiful. But do you understand what the cross symbolizes? Death. Take up thy cross daily. Die to yourself. Follow me. Uh, there was a, I can't remember the, the lesson that we were doing. I can't remember who the, the person uh, teaching it. But that verse can be tied to an electric chair. How many of us would take an electric chair trinket and wear it around our neck? Well, that is the cross. That is the picture of the cross is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Take up thy cross daily. Die to yourself daily. And let God have his way and work his way in you. We should not want to hold back of anything. God has given us Everything that we need. Oh, yes, we give our 10%, but that is the tithe. That is what's already his. The rest is an offering. Tithes and offerings. Give. You cannot outgive God. If I could stop right now and, and ask many of you to stand up and give me a testimony of how God has supplied everything that you need when you even... Uh, contemplated whether tithing or not, and then, then you trusted and had faith in God and tithe, and how God supplied everything you need when you couldn't see it. What does Hebrews 11 1 say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith is not seeing. What does Romans 10, 7, is it Romans 10, 17? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Oh, we have faith in God because we know he is. And we know that he will be. Now, the implications of, of, of where we're going to head today, little is much when God is in it. The, the sermon title is, is that. And you, you can tie that to tithing. But can I tell you what is the most important thing in this text that we need to be concerned with and aware of and, and, and thinking of and hearing is in verse 12. So when they were filled. 
Those words, I believe, are one of the most important words in this text. So when they were filled, what were they filled with? They wasn't necessarily, they were filled with bread. But Jesus was not talking about the bread. How many, how often did he say in the scriptures, quit concerning yourself with things that will perish. Quit concerning you with the things that will not last. Quit concerning yourself with the physical bread. But focus on the spiritual bread. This is the implication here. The application is Lord, we, are, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ comes and changes your life and makes you new, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the implication and the application that we will see here today. Acts 1.8 tells us that. But let's start right here at verse 10 and then we will get to this. Then Jesus said, remember, when you see uh, therefore or, or uh, but God or, or after this or wherever, when you look at those things, you have to go before it to see what's going on. It says, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. After he had a conversation with Philip, after he had a conversation with Andrew, after he had a conversation with the disciples, he said, make the people sit down. Why did he say that so firmly and so boldly? Because Philip and Andrew and the rest of the disciples, it doesn't say the rest of the disciples, but I I can guarantee you that uh, positively I believe that the disciples were there. Because why? It says, um, uh uh-oh, I think I just messed up. Yep, verse 3. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. So all the disciples were there. So why did he say, make the people sit down so boldly? Because the disciples were in a committee meeting and saying, there's no way that we're going to be able to feed all these people. Now, I think, brother so-and-so, we need to go and uh, we need to get up a, another committee to see if we can gather up a, a, or find a bakery within this county to, uh, to see if we can bake and get them to bake enough bread. Oh, and then, uh, well, brother Andrew, brother, brother Peter, y'all fishermen, won't you go out in the boat and, uh, won't you go out in the boat and go fishing? Why did he say it so boldly? Because they were focusing on the physical things and not looking at the spiritual, not looking at Jesus. Do you understand that in Philippians 4.19 it says, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He said that so boldly because they were so focusing on the physical thing and not seeing the spiritual. They seen the signs. you understand what it says in... in um, what does it say in verse number 9? No, verse number 2. The great multitude followed him because they what? They saw his signs. They were still looking for a miracle. They were still looking for something. They were still looking that, for the Messiah that their father and mother and their grandfathers had told them about. Look for this. This prophet is coming. The Messiah will come. They were still looking at that. They were looking for the sign. They were looking for the spiritual of the physical when the spiritual was right in front of them. Why did he, why did he say that? Make them sit down. Often, often. And now I'm not preaching against committees. Please don't take me outside and, and beat me and tell me to get away. But I think sometimes we get more focused on what we think about it instead of praying about it and letting God align our lives up with his will. Andrew and Philip and the other disciples were all worried about Could you see what Andrew says in verse, um, verse number 8 and 9? He says, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, 
There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Can I tell you to look back over your life? I don't know what God has done in your life, and I don't know what God is going to do in your life, but can I tell you God will keep His promise. Everything that he says, everything that we read, everything that we believe, everything that we focus on, his promises will always be true. Can I tell you that the disciples saw the great things? Many signs already, and we'll see many more in the scripture of John. But they still had questions. They still have doubts. They still had worries. Can I ask you, think about the things that God has done in your life that you know that nothing else could have done it and no one else could have done it. But God did it. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Quit relying on you and rely on Jesus. Rely on God. Take up thy cross daily and follow him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you seek God first, everything will be handled. That doesn't mean we won't go through trials. That doesn't mean that we won't go through valleys. But even in the trials, even in the valleys, God is there. God is faithful. God is just. God will be true. His promises will always be true. Make the people sit down. Look at verse 5 and verse 6. It says, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing the great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself, look at the capital letters. I don't know if it's capitalized in your text, but it's capitalized in my text. So it is significant that this is talking of who? Jesus. It says, then Jesus lifted up his eyes. Then in verse 6 it says, but this he said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. He already had it figured out. Can I tell you? He already has your trials, your troubles, your valleys, your situation figured out before they even come to you. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. What does it say? He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will, He shall direct thy path. He knew. He knew what He was going to do. He was, he was telling, He was asking them to test them of their faith. But they were more concerned of what they saw, how many people they saw, rather than who they were talking to. Now, faith is the substance of things. Let me go there. Hebrews 11. So I don't misquote it. Now, faith is the things hope. Thank you. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Don't look at the impossible. Look at the one that makes all things possible. Don't look at it through your eyes. Look at it through the Scriptures. Look at it through what He is doing in in and through your lives. Now, there was much grass in the place. So so the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. Can I say that the the men there, most of the men probably had families. 
So the commentators say there's uh, anywhere from uh, five to fifteen to twenty thousand people there talking about counting the wives and the children. It's all speculations, but I want you to understand that we. We'll go there. We as men are held responsible for everything that goes on within our family. What are you doing to your grand, uh, for your grandchildren? What are you teaching your grandchildren? What are you teaching your kids? It's all about the gospel, to glorify God and only Him and to preach the gospel. Why is it uh, the men only mention? Because they are the head of the household. And it is our responsibility to train up our children in the way they should go. Yes, we need a helpmate. Yes, we need a wife. I praise God for my wife every day, and I hope you do the same. They are helpmates. We are here together, and we should be building, uh, building each other up and coming together with the same mind as Christ. Let this mind be in you, that which is also in Christ. The bond that is made between a husband and a wife and God. It's all about him. In the number of about 5,000. Then move to verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as, what is it? They want it. Oh, just just start over here, and if you don't get enough, we'll we'll tell the other people to to come back tomorrow, and we'll see if we can scrounge up some more food. So you're looking at, and I can't even fathom. I know that uh, manna one. I can't remember the true number. Of, is it thirty thousand, Pastor? Manna one that uh, North Carolina Baptist men has. They feed. They can feed thirty thousand a day. Is that right? 30,000 a day. I can't, my mind cannot even fathom that. Miss Angela, me and you would be, what in the world? How am I? But can I tell you, with, with me, it's impossible. With God, it's all things possible. He didn't, he didn't question. He didn't have any questions. He knew what he was going to do, what he says. They ate until they were feel you understand in that country there were a lot of poor people you know and i I think it's our responsibility as a church to to feed and to help but it's also our responsibility to preach and teach and to tell them about jesus and to point them to the way because listen food is good food is great for nourishment but it will not last what does it tell us in matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 6, I believe it is. It says, uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Don't fill yourself. Don't fill your life. Don't fill your concern with things that will perish. Fill your things that God wants you to be filled with. You understand in Acts 1, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will, uh, he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. When you are saved, when when Jesus Christ comes into your life and makes you new, he gives you everything that you need to do everything that he wants you to do. But in order to be be sanctified and satisfied, and, and not satisfied, excuse me, to be sanctified and to do everything that God wants you to do, we have to be in the Word. Blessed is the... Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Or let the word of God be everything about you. Let, uh, what does it say in Romans 1, 16? For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of salvation for everyone that believeth. For the Jews first and also the Greeks. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be 
and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hey, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are to do everything that God wants us to do. Pray. Get on your knees and let your face be buried in the Word of God and let Him have His way with you and do everything that He wants you to do. Be filled with the Word. Be filled. What is, why, why should we be so concerned with learning the Word? Because it says, Thy word have I hid. Thy word have I treasured in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I was thinking this morning as I was getting ready. That word there, it says, uh, it says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, when they had all they could stand, they didn't just take they didn't take the, the food away when they thought they had enough. Or when they were running out of time and, and the next program was moving on and people were still eating. And they said, well, it, it, it's time. Uh, we, our, our schedule is, is saying we have to move on to this. No, they, they ate everything that they needed. They ate until they were filled. And I was thinking about that this morning. And uh, they were telling us in school to get your illustrations. Be aware of what's going on in the world. Yeah, it tells us to be be ye separate, but there are illustrations all around us. Pastor, right? So I was thinking of the Snicker commercial. How many of you ever seen the commercial? It talks about uh, eating a Snicker when you're uh, angry. There you go. One of the commercials is, uh, is, is Betty White, I think, and there's some other, uh, other stars that are in there. But you think about the commercial, how it sells itself. Oh, if you're hangry, eat a snicker and it'll fill you up. Can I ask you how many of you ate breakfast this morning? How many of you plan on eating lunch after church? How many of you plan on eating supper before you go to bed? Okay, how many of you... Or planning on eating breakfast, lunch, and supper for the next seven days. So why, if we're planning on eating physical food, why do we not plan on eating spiritual food every day? We come to church on Sunday morning. We come for Bible study. We come for uh, Sunday school, some call it Bible study, some call it Sunday school. We come to Sunday school, we go in there and let a teacher teach us what uh, the Scripture says, what, the, what they've studied that week. We come to service and we listen to a, a preacher preach for 40 minutes, and then we go home, we throw a, our Bible on a coffee table, and then next Sunday morning we'll pick it back up. But I tell you what, when this belly starts churning and hunger pains, my belly button starts eating my backbone in half, I'm going to go find me a sandwich. We're more worried about physical food than we are spiritual food. We are not doing what God wants us to do. Take the illustration of the Snicker bar. Can I tell you, you can't eat enough Snicker bars to make yourself filled. You rot your teeth out before you have enough to eat. Blessed is the man who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. 
Oh, we go on in the scripture and, and we'll get there in John chapter 6. And when the, when the multitudes are following Jesus, what does Jesus say? Oh, you followed me because you ate and were filled. Go to that scripture. I believe it's, uh, I believe it's verse 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into the boat and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered and said to them, Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has sent his seal on him. When we are more concerned with the physical than we are with the spiritual, our mind and our heart are in the wrong place. Just as you eat physical food daily. And why do you eat physical food? To get full because you're hungry. To get energy. To keep moving. To keep doing things. Because if you can go without uh, food a while, but you can't go without water, right? You can. But we eat physical food to have nourishment. If we eat physical food on a daily basis to have nourishment, we also should be concerned with eating the Word of God. Now, I'm not literally tearing the pages out and eating. That'd be disgusting. But I, can I tell you, to read the Word of God, remember we talked about it last week? Read the Word of God. Let the Word of God read you. And then what comes out of the mouth? What does it say in, in Psalms uh, 119? It says, hide thy word in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, the, I think the NASB says, uh, hide thy treasure thy word in thy heart. And then you go to Matthew and it says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Then it tells us again in Matthew twelve thirty four, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good things? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Can I tell you, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. So just as you're concerned about being filled with physical food, we should be more concerned with being filled with spiritual food. We need to read the Word of God and let the Word of God read us and apply it to our life and, and let it convict our heart when we're not doing what God wants us to do. And then what's in the heart will come out the mouth and what will come out the mouth will be glorifying God and spreading the gospel. Are we more concerned with being filled with food that will not last then we are being filled with spiritual food that will last for all eternity. Can I tell you that Jesus will give you, God will give you everything that you need. But we have to read it, study it, apply it, live it. It's all here. Everything we need is here. Just as the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in your life. Yes, the sanctification process begins there. He's still working on me to make me what he wants me to be. He's still working on me. Sanctification. I ask you, I urge you. Quit being so, let us not be so concerned with the physical and be more concerned with the spiritual. Because when we look at things, when we look at the world with the lens of the Bible instead of our own eyes, we will be at the altar crying and weeping 
in our com- about our community being lost. We will be on our face before God. God, help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to tell the people that you have uh, come in my, my, my life. Let us be bold. Say one, uh, Romans 1.16 with me. And when you say it, I want you to say it like you mean it. Because that's what we need to be filled with. Do you know it by heart? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes, for the Jews first and also the Greek. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Jesus Christ has filled you. He has made you new. If Jesus Christ has made you new, then he has given you everything you need to do whatever he wants you to do. Don't let this be, this hour we're here. Don't let, let this be the last time you open the Word of God. Because why did the people follow Jesus to the next part? Because they were hungry and they were fed by Jesus. Oh, he, he can give me the food. But then what did he say? Your fathers were fed in the wilderness, but it didn't last. If you're sitting here today and don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, he can change you. He can make you new. Without him, you have no hope. You have no life. You are dead. For all have sinned and come short of glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you right now and you don't know Him as your personal Savior, believe, accept, receive the salvation that He brings you. And then He will fill you with everything you need to do what you would have in the day. If you are born again believers, if you know without a shadow of doubt that you are going to spend eternity with Him, then let us quit being ashamed of what we have and tell the world who has us. Father, we thank You for today. We thank You for the Word We thank you for everything that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for filling me with everything that you've filled me with and and, and doing in and through me everything that you want to do. Lord, just please help us to be what you would have us to be and go where you have us to go. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. At this time, the altar is open.